the tattoo. Some might call it barbaric, others artistic. Why do so many subject themselves to this pain as a form of self-expression? Where did it all start? And why do so many sailors don them all over their bodies? And why, oh why, did I think that this was going to be a good idea? This is the story of a sailboat named Sylvia and the ragtag crew that call her home. Join us each week as we explore our planet, both above and below the surface, and find out what it's really like to live a life at sea. This is Expedition Drenched. I'm suffering a lot. Yes, from seeing it, it's, it's bleeding quite a lot. I think you will love the result. I think he's getting a really nice elaborated tattoo. He's holding there. He's just doing some... But it's okay. Nate, how are you doing there? trying to go to my special place, and she's not exactly helping, so let me tell you a story instead. So when did all of this start? Well, apparently 5,000 years ago. About 3,000 BC, we were finding Icemen and ancient Egyptians both donning tattoos. But it's this man, Captain James Cook, which has given credit for bringing tattoo culture to the Western world. On his voyage through French Polynesia, the South Pacific, and New Zealand, he and his crew came across many chieftains and Polynesians with full body tattoos. Many of his crewmen were intrigued by the tattoos they saw and were soon sporting ink as well. In the summer of 1775, James Cook was returning to the British Isles from his voyage. And with him he had the mysterious Umaai, a native from Uliete Island who was a known master in the art of tatau. Sailors were lining up to get a tatau from the legendary Umai, and the tradition spread like wildfire. Yo ho, yo ho, come sail with me on pirate seas with treasure. Soon sailors were sporting tattoos as badges of honor. Famously, sailors are very superstitious people, so every tattoo has a much deeper meaning. The North Star, the primary waymark for sailors of ancient times, Sipo believed a tattoo of a North Star would give them safe passage, often combined with a compass so you could always find your way home. An anchor, often symbolizing a safe haven or that you have crossed the Atlantic and returned safely. Hold Fast was written across the knuckles of a sailor to help them get a good grip in the rigging. A swallow signifies you have sailed 5,000 nautical miles. At 10,000, you can get a second swallow. If you were really superstitious, you could always get a rooster on your right foot and a pig on your left in hopes that they would help you survive a shipwreck. You see, in World War II, they were always shipped in crates or barrels, therefore always being the survivors of a shipwreck. During World War II, if you had served in Hawaii, you could get the famous hula girl. If you were lucky enough to serve in China, you could get a dragon. But not to be confused with a golden dragon, which you could only get if you had crossed the international date line. A sailor who had rounded Cape Horn could get a fully rigged sailing ship, but you must make sure that you get an odd mast count, because an even mast count signifies bad luck. And lastly, and probably my favorite, you could get Neptune, signifying that you had crossed the equator, entered his court, and successfully completed the ritual so that you would never have to go through that agony and embarrassment again. And who were these men I've asked to inflict this pain on me? Well, I know I'm in good hands because they are none other than the famous Sawape family. 
Being tattooed by them is a great honor. My name is Estelo Zuguapi, and I've been tattooing for 43 years now. I feel that uh, it's an application for, for me as a tattooist to, uh, to tattoo my people, you know, because it's our culture and, and it's, uh, the importance of being tattooed is uh, it's a mark that tells people that you are ready to serve your people. The Polynesian culture, as for example, you know, everybody lost their culture. Uh, we don't know whether it's uh, because of Christianity or something else. They lost their culture, they lost... Uh, and tattooing was uh, the, the most important thing that, uh, you know, that they are able to, to, to revive it. Tattooing has been in the family for about five generations. And my father was a tattoo artist and, and then passed it down to my brothers. It's, uh, practically, it's uh, passed down within bloodlines, you know. Uh, you don't have to, uh, to learn it, you know, it's just something that it's like a gift, you know, given to a certain people, you know, not, not everybody can perform it. What kind of bone do you have? Uh, it's not bone. It's not bone, but it is? Not bone anymore. Ah, okay. So now what it's do you use? It's titanium steel. What was the most typical bone? For that. My name is Atta Scott Suwapi and I am the second eldest son. How long have people in Samoa been making these types of tattoos? Like the, this method? It was way... <laughs> Way back, it was before the missionaries around. Yeah. It was way before the first time we got here. Mm -hmm. It was when Christianity arrived in our land, in our land. They tried to stop it. Yeah. It Why is Uh Manta Ray, okay. Um, when I was, I'm a scuba instructor and I do underwater video. And one time I very much questioned, like, I was in Hawaii guiding and I was questioning whether I should stay there or go do something else with my life. Yeah. And this, the day that I was really feeling that, I was underwater. And I was having these thoughts underwater, mm -hmm. and I had never seen a manta ray, and I always wanted to, and I wondered why I'd never seen one. 
and then the biggest, blackest, most beautiful manta ray appeared and swam around me for swam around me for 15 minutes. And then I knew I was doing the right thing. Yeah. That's why the manta ray. That's why I wanted to leave the story. The story gets a little bit deeper than that. I had sold everything I had and left everything behind. The business I had built from the ground up, as well as a home with a white picket fence. I said my goodbyes to my family, who I'm really close with. Packed everything into a couple bags. Booked my flight to Maui without a plan. Chasing what I knew in my heart I wanted. To get back to the islands and live a life underwater. I worked as a scuba instructor and I slept on the beach for the first four months. I was happy, but began to get lonely, and I missed my family. We are all human. We all have self-doubt. Had I made the right choice? Do I have a future here? On this particular day, I was working, guiding a group of scuba divers, and when I entered the water on a drift dive, it became very clear very quickly that the current was ripping. I knew right away that we weren't going to be able to make it to the dive site. So I made the decision to turn out to sea into the blue, knowing that we would likely see nothing at all. With nothing to point out, my mind started to quickly wander back to those same defeating thoughts of whether or not I was doing the right thing. As I had suspected, everybody had blown through their air fighting the current. I did one last air check and signaled to the divers that it was time to do their safety stop. At that moment, I looked down and from the depths I saw a shadow rising below us. It took me a moment to realize what it was as the shape of the manta took form. I quickly banged on my tank, signaling for all the divers to come back down, and time seemed to have stood still as the manta just danced around us seemingly forever. I could hear everybody giggling through their regulators, and I sent each one of them up one by one as they were running out of air until it was just me and the manta ray. I'm a big believer in the butterfly effect or forks in the road, small choices we make that greatly alter our path in life. For me, this was one of those moments because in this moment dancing with the manta ray, I knew without a doubt I was doing the right thing and I knew I needed to stay. Just a couple weeks later, this really pretty girl showed up to work at the dive shop and everything changed. I honestly don't know if I would be where I am today if it weren't for that manta ray. And maybe one day I might see that same ray and I can thank him for the pep talk. Is it finished? Yeah. Good. Oh. Done and dust. Done and dust. Are you happy with it? Who? Me? You. I'm surprised with it. Surprised. In so what way? So much the mind can do for us, you know? You let the mind speak its own. It will turn out to be lovely. Yeah, cool. But if you try to maneuver it through, some of the things that you see, mm -hmm. it won't turn out to be yours. It seems like it, it's just a copy of someone else. Mm. But if you let the mind and the heart speak through it, it will turn out to be nice. Nice. Okay, up to go. It's done, done. Yeah, it's done and done. Oh, thank you. Look at that face. Yeah. That's a happy face right there. Ah. Wait, lay down for a second, let's take a... Is it okay to, uh... You ready to stand up? Yeah. Do you need a hand or are you all good? I'm good. Mm -hmm. 
You got Jordan hair right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. Oi. Oi. Are you happy it's over though? Of course. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went through waves. It would be like, oh, it hurts bad. And then I'd be like, just give up and be okay. The singing helps. Yeah. <laughs> the singing really helps. Oh. Um, how am I doing? How am I feeling? Um, <laughs> it is so much more painful than I thought it would be. The big comb yeah. feels like so, you know, like a normal tattoo gun. It's like 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 the little needles. Like, brr, brr, and, but this, like, the big comb is like, imagine 20 of those all at once. Yeah. The last ones that they, he was uh, tapping, those uh, are the legs of the octopus. So I think most of the design that he had, it's uh, related with the ocean. I think he's gonna love it. Yeah. It's gonna be so, it's like so special. Uh, most of the salmon designs are based on things, the environment and uh, the things that we rely on for living, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the structure that I put on uh, Nate's back is more more natural stuff uh, and a couple of uh, designs from the, the full body to towel for men cool. so it speaks about uh, the journey from wherever we came from until we reach here and it speaks about what are the things that we, uh, we rely on to live, to survive on this land. So, as you can see that I've laid out a, a group of designs about the spirits gave me to put on your back that suits you and your personalities and, and not only that, but the journey that you'll be taking on the sea. And a couple of designs here that I put here is the, we got the fish up here, we got the sea calves on the top. And then here it came more like mountain peaks, but it's spearheads mainly. Oh, okay. And spearheads are like spear we use for hunting back in the days, and now we use it for fishing. This one here is spearhead as well. Like I told you that this one here is, we call it fakalafe, and we get it from the octopus uh, legs or whatever cool. we call it. And then you got your ocean here. The crooked lines here. Okay, so this one is yeah, ocean. It's ocean. And this one here, we call it the box with the fucking push out, the box with two open ends. So okay. it's really about right here. Uh, life's opportunity, it's about what you give is what you're getting, you know, generosity and all that. But the whole thing itself with uh, regards to the full body tattoo of, of a man and, uh, and a lady, it's about a journey into maturity, a journey of each individual from childhood into maturity, which is doesn't doesn't like count how old they are and you know how young we are, what's a certain age for a person to have a, a tat. It's not only it's not that. It's about how you grow in here and up here. That. Uh, that defines maturity in in, in Samoa and the Samoan culture. So, 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 for maybe for some people, a tattoo you might say that if you don't think someone's ready for it, like you have to be ready for a tattoo. You have to. Yeah. And uh, most of the people have to come. You know, they they think that they're ready, but okay. after the first session, they <laughs> sit up and they say, "This is the biggest mistake." <laughs> but then, but then. It's there's no more no no more pulling back. They have to finish it because it's a huge disgrace yeah. to the family if they don't finish it. Yeah. So it's more something that you need to consider it with your family before you come and take it. You know, because yeah. you're you're bringing them on your shoulder with you when you come and have one. 
Welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a lovely day. Same to you. <laughs> Next time on Expedition Drenched. On the road again. We are waving goodbye to Apia and Samoa. Oh, we're rolling. Stuff's rolling. <laughs> nightfish. Our first ever nightfish. There you go. Yeah. You ready? <laughs> How long do you think you'll be able to go before you start crying like a little girl? Uh, three, maybe four seconds. <laughs> Just give me the play-by-play. -play. I'm over there and she's like, it's bleeding a lot. <laughs> it I looks know. like he's in a lot of pain. So I'm like, I'm trying to escape. And she's over there like pulling me right back into it. Just like not letting me escape at all. Just like, he's hurting a lot. I have to make it like, you know, I like know. give an update. Uh, yeah. So I, I didn't know what to do. Like was like, okay, I need to say something about it. But I wanted to do it low. I was like talking like this to yeah. the camera, hoping that he, he wasn't listening, but uh, he was listening like, yeah. like open, yeah. open ears. <laughs> Poor thingy. Mary's suffering quite a lot. Going to my, my special place. <laughs> they separate. The, the ass cheeks and it goes till the asshole and I don't know that has to be like the worst yeah. pain ever I think I prefer to give a child you know yeah. a childbirth or something like this at least you have a baby afterwards <laughs>